Welcome to the grand finals of the Good Against Evil tournament for BFME Me 2, the Rise of the Witch King. Best of 7 between Imperialist against Fairy. The first matchup is Dwarfs against Goblins on the map Erin Lair. And we will have a lot of Goblins today, by the way, guys. As Fairy is also participating with the Goblin faction for the evil part. At the bottom side, we have the Goblin player Fairy. And his opponent at the top side is the green dwarf player Imperialist. Starting with two mineshafts. And at the bottom side we will have two tunnels. Um, both factions are quite mobile. But I would say just matchup wise that this should favor the goblin, I mean the dwarf faction. But we are, you know, not talking about a random goblin player. I think Fairy is a one trick goblin player. He likes to play the goblin faction the most. With that being said... I am pretty sure there is not a single matchup Perry didn't play yet with the goblins at least 100 times, you know. He knows what to do. Uh, we will have two mineshafts into the archer range from the dwarf player imperialist. Might go for an offensive move. Unlike, you know, unlike the archers, the extroverts are also dealing significant amount of damage to the structures. They will be also really great when it comes to defend those mineshafts against the goblin spam. Talking about the goblin spam, we will have the first goblin cave up on the fields now for fairy. And the first goblin warrior is gonna join the battlefield pretty soon. Um, he might go for the creep here at the, at the left side of the map. And uh, this one is really close, so you, it's kind of a free creep, you can always go for that. And uh, the second goblin cave is coming up already, so I'm expecting a really great goblin spam. DGP, welcome to the stream. Um, Extroverts are gonna join the battlefield pretty soon. What is that actually? Uh, he's going for the Hall of Warriors now. There is a mineshaft, he might go for the creep. Um, this builder from the Goblin player Fairy is looking to get a closer tunnel to the side of Imperialist. As he is creeping the works first with those Goblin Warriors. Uh, I'm also expecting a third Goblin Keef, yes there, there we go. So it's gonna be at least three goblin caves. That's what Fairy is very likes to do all the time. Likes to go for three goblin caves into the spider pit or potentially fissure. <laughs> Have fun? Question mark. Have fun. <laughs> all right. Uh, both players going for the creep first, so it's gonna be equal in terms of experience, power points, and treasure. So 350 command points for Imperialist and 350 command points for Fairy. So nothing too crazy just yet. Um, Fairy will be a bit faster. By creeping that one. Those goblins, they're gonna hit level 2 now. And the treasure is gonna be great. Remember the goblins, they are quite cheap, so you can spam them. They cost a bit more than orcs. They cost only 20 more. And by the time Imperialist will be done with the first creep, Fairy is gonna be done with the second creep already. Um, looks like we're gonna see an attack incoming. Powerpoint wise, Rallying Cole is gonna be ready, and Fairy didn't pick anything just yet. Remember, Fairy could start with the cave bats. He could also possibly start with the uh, war chant or even tainted land if he wants to. But I'm expecting at least um, for the beginning of the game the war chant spell. I might be wrong though. Right, uh, there is a mineshaft, so he will get reinforcements on the field. We have two extroverts and a guardian battalion inside the mineshaft. Uh, they kind of come out here though to defend this, uh, to defend against those goblins. Um, Fairy didn't pick anything just yet, and Imperialist didn't use his rallying call. I think that's what Fairy is waiting for. Um, you know, quality over quantity kind of stuff. It's gonna be very hard for the Goblin player to fight, you know, even a 1v1 situation. That's why he's mainly focusing on the map control. That's gonna be the third work layer. The Goblin player Fairy will be grabbing himself. Um, yeah, and in the meantime, you know, the Dwarf player Imperialist is just building up more units. And his units are gonna hit like a truck. <laughs> and also win those fights even when they are out outnumbered by the Goblin player. And that's why we're gonna have a Spider Pits now. Spiderlings are gonna join the fight as well as the Fissure is coming up. That means we're gonna have potentially some Half-Troll Swordsman or even some Cave Trolls later. And... Yeah, a lot of a lot of goblins coming, but so far no player was uh, were, you know not none of the players were actually able to take down any structures just yet. That might change right now. Uh, he started with cave pads, by the way. Uh, I'm expecting rallying call to be used here. 
from the Dwarf player, but he's not going for it just yet. More reinforcements are coming from the back. While Linkol was now used, he needs to use the cave pads. That's gonna be the case. Cave pads are gonna debuff the enemy units, but it's not gonna negate the effect of the rallying call, as you know. More reinforcements are coming, but quality over quantity. He needs to get to the back line as fast as possible. Now he needs to try to surround. As he's trying to take down one of the mills in the uh, mineshaft in the back. He managed to get into the back line with only one goblin warrior. That's not gonna change anything. As those pikemen and guardians are tanking the damage from those goblin warriors, extra rovers in the back are the ones who are dealing the damage. Stage 2 is coming up for the dwarf player. And it looks like you want to go for an all-out fight against the goblins. Yes, no other units, but goblins just yet on the field. There is some, you know, tunnel here. So he's getting some money. Yes, um, still 400 command points against 560. Yes, now the power points he needs for the war chant, which might be necessary. Now we will have the leadership also from the stage in the back. That means, you know, it's going to be almost impossible to deal with the army from the dwarves. So what was happening at the beginning of the game until this moment was actually the dwarf player Imperialist was building himself, a, you know, a lot of units, a lot of extra worlds in the back as the main damage dealers of the army. Some guardians and pikemen in the front to just absorb the damage from the goblin warriors. And like mentioned at the beginning of the game, unlike archers, the extra worlds are also really strong against structures. You can see the damage output by yourself. Uh, tainted line will be used here, which is not bad. Cave troll is coming. Let's see how much damage the Kif Troll will be able to deal. He needs to pick up a Goblin and throw it. But the thing is that, you know, the Fear Resistant will get negated from the stage on the back. So he needs to take down the Mineshaft. Not more reinforcements. Might, I mean, there is a one. There is one in the back. So he needs to take down these two, three structures. There is even a Well. So that means the Dwarf units are even healing, are even healing up here. That's crazy. Um, the only Kif Troll he had on the field has been taken down. And that might be an early GG. Um, next game, if this, game, this game is gonna be over, will be, you know, Goblins by Imperialist against Men of the West by Fairy. And, yeah, great Goblin gameplay here from Imperialist, definitely. Was even able to keep this Mineshaft alive. I mean, it's, it wouldn't matter that mu much, because look at this, how many Mineshafts he has around this area. Spiderlings are focusing on the map control. But now Imperial is gonna make sure to attack from multiple sides at once. And the thing is that he has now 325 command points available only. Almost no money and barely any units on the field. There is a cave troll. It looks like you wanna grab a tree. Which is gonna give him the chance to hit multiple units at once. The builder has to be careful around this area. Charge attack will be used from those guardians. That's gonna give them 50% increased damage and armor as you know. One of the last remaining tunnels has been taken down. There is one more here, but that's pretty much it. He has no more resource income, barely any units around. He's going for a giant expansion. It's just gonna delay, it's not gonna deny. I don't see any coming back potential from this situation for the Goblin player Fairy, as more reinforcements are coming from the mineshaft. Rallying Call is ready, he can use the Hobbits, plus the Rallying Call. He doesn't even use the Hobbits just yet. It looks like you want to commit to the fortress. There are some guardians in the front. Um, he didn't go for the siege hammers, if I'm not mistaken. Nope, he didn't. And also no banner carry upgrades. There is only one cave troll, but a lot of extrovers in the back. The cave pads are taken down by the extrovers. The troll is quite slow and will be taken down here potentially. One hit away. And Fairy is not happy about the game number one. But you don't need to be worried about the game number one. For me, the game number one is like more a warm-up game, you know. Uh, I mean, it's kind of bad, obviously, if you need to, if you have to start the series one or behind. Um, but we have already seen many, many situations in which players were losing 3-0 and then winning four games in a row. So we know in Rise of the Witch King, everything is possible. The Fortress is the last structure, one of the two last structures remaining on the field from the goblin player. He has two builders though, still alive, that's something. It's a matter of time, as the fortress is gonna go down, we're gonna jump right into the next game, in which Fairy gets to choose the map and plays Man of the West against the goblins from Imperialist. The game number two is all about to begin, guys. Goblins against Man of the West, this time on the map, Ethan Morris ate it. Fairy is 1-0 behind. And he was also choosing this map to play against the goblins.
And by the way, Fairy just lost his very first game in this tournament. So far, until the last game, he was undefeated in this tournament. He won against everyone, every single game. Just like Imperialist, let's see if Imperialist can actually win this tournament, potentially being undefeated without losing any single game. On the right side, we have the Green Goblin player Imperialist. And his opponent on the left side is the Man of the West player Fairy. Uh, early Barak start here for Man of the West player. And we will have two tunnels into potentially the Goblin Cave. <laughs> cave or Fast Rex is actually trying to figure out what his opponent is doing. But I think Fairy is not even. <laughs> OP. <laughs> Alright. Uh, yeah, two farms into the barracks. I mean, one farm into the barracks, so he's gonna go for the creep, potentially. Which is gonna be kinda hard, to be honest. Because we don't have any war creeps on this map. We have only troll creeps, goblins, and white. So, I mean, they are not that easy to take. Especially the white creep is really challenging. And he's gonna go for an attack, by the way, with those soldiers early on. Let's see, I mean, in a 1v1 situation, obviously the soldiers are gonna be much stronger than the goblins. Dragons, tricks, ill trolls. Spider pit start. Okay. That's actually very good from Imperialist here. Because those spiderlings, they will be easily able to take down those soldiers. You started, unlike the goblin player Fairy in the last game. With the war chant. Remember, Fairy last game started with the Keith Bats instead. Against the dwarves. And Fairy obviously is starting with the Rallying Coal. Okay, by the time the soldiers gonna be arriving here, I think the spider links will be on uh, on the field. And spider links are quite strong against the swordsmen. It's not gonna be one-sided though, because, you know, soldiers are not very weak. So, they, if they use the rallying coal and the uh, hold crown stands plus the shield ball formation, it's gonna take a while for those spider links to take them down. The second unit, I'll... <laughs> legs, yeah. Links. Okay, Warchan will be used and uh, Rallying Core will be used. Both units are buffed. But you can see, you know, soldiers are quite tough. It's gonna be still won by the by the Spiderlings, though. I mean, but they are using the whole crown stance and the shield ball formation. And you can see in a situation like this that uh, the armor fix from the version 8.2 is actually affecting those soldiers a lot, you know. Normally, you know, before the armor fix, they would maybe still die, but it would take those Spiderlings much more time to take them down. Now he needs to get some um, pikemen. Um, also, the archers are gonna counter those spiderlings. I mean, the thing is that they are really, really mobile. And super annoying to deal with. The goblin cave is up on the fields now. Um, the farm in the back might be in trouble. He's gonna build a wall up here. The spearmen are trying their hardest, but they are not as mobile. They are still being buffed from the war chance, by the way. And... Like the Alvin units, they are also getting stealthed when they are around the trees. See what is coming up. More spiderlings are coming. The second Goblin Keef is now up on the field for Imperialist. Fun friend spiders. <laughs> uh, it's like a complaining, you know what I'm saying? It's not, it doesn't mean fr fun friend spiders. <laughs> it's like a complaining because the game was laggy for them, I think, at the beginning of the game. And they were complaining about it. Right, uh, he's gonna creep the white there. Uh, will be now, you know, afterwards able to capture this in if he wants to. That was a fast creeping with three battalions of spiderlings, by the way. Getting even more uh, resources now, building more tunnels at the sides of the map. To expand and get more money. And Rallying Coal and Warchan are still not available. 350 command points for Man of the West, 400 command points for the Goblin player. He will have some goblins now for the defensive purposes. He has already two, ton uh, two in the tunnel. And now three, four even. And a lot of spiderlings in the back. Gondor Knights are coming. Uh, but they, they couldn't see them, you know what I mean? Because they are stealthed around the trees, like mentioned before. Look how much damage they were able to deal to the soldiers already. That's crazy. Almost the entire battalion has been taken down. Uh, if you are wondering why they are glowing, it's because of the horse bonus. Just like with the orcs. Uh, if you gather them in, in numbers of 100 or more, they will be passively dealing 25% uh, 
more damage and fairy is like yeah gg i think it doesn't look good for fairy though in this game um just because his start was really bad i mean the start could work if the goblin player would go for the goblin cave instead but spider links were like the best blind counter in a situation like this so he wasted his rallying call, he was not able to deal any damage, the spiderlings on the other side were able to take down those soldiers quite fast and then even deal some counter pressure, forcing him to use his units for defensive purposes and denying him from expanding more. And you know, defending himself at the same time, so the goblin player didn't lose a structure just yet, all game long. And he's being under constant pressure. So Imperial is actually in form, you can see, he knows what to do. I mean, you know, he's one of the better, one of the best 1v1 players of Rise of the Witch King for sure. Spider Riders are joining the fight now as well. Just gonna make it even harder and force him to make more pikes. <laughs> They're gonna just swim a bit. <laughs> Look at this. So that's still better. Yeah, I say one of the best, you know. I never said he's the best. But you need to agree also, Andy, that he's one of the best players, you know, in, in the 1v1 situation, at least in a, in this moment. Exactly, Smiley, you are right about the meaning, about that. Nerf spiders, please. Yeah, this game is looking really good for the goblin player, Imperialist. He is already 1-0 ahead, as you know. The fissure is coming up now, which is gonna make it even harder. Uh, with the potential half throw swordsman and then cave trolls later on. We have Eomir though on the field. That's gonna be good against the, against the spider riders. And once he gets the level 2 with the spear throw and I mean level 4 with the outlaw leadership. He might be able to get some money. It's you know quite rewarding especially if you end up killing those expensive units. Like those uh, spider riders from the spider pits level 2. Half troll swordsman, cave trolls. Um, you know, Iomi is gonna be pretty much good against cave trolls and spider riders. A lot of goblins. Only two spider, I mean two goblin caves though. He's creeping the troll with the spiderlings. He also used warchant here. Yeah, he used warchant. Cave pets is gonna be ready. I mean, he used warchant, but the thing is that since he was using that off screen, uh, Man of the West player was also using rallying call. Okay, never mind. He was also using rallying call. Can now go for the troll creep if he wants to with those pikemen. But that's not gonna be the case. Um, you know, he has now some time to expand. He's building a statue in the back of his base. But remember, the cave pads are able, not only able to debuff the enemy units, but also nullify all the enemy leadership. That includes the leadership from Iomir for the Gondonites, but also from the statue, which might buff those archers and those soldiers and pikemen. I mean, that's gonna be a massive army soon with a lot of spider riders. Fissure is level 2, Cave Troll is on his way. He might be able to take down this tunnel. It's risky though. Yomi got level almost 3 now after the kill. Um, the goblin structures, you need to kinda kill them twice. Otherwise, the rubble will be rebuilding over time. Yeah, maybe. Yomi is leveling up, only one level away now from Outlaw leadership. And then you're gonna get all the time money from killing enemy units. And you will be constantly killing enemy units, obviously. I mean, I think this game is still winnable. For the Man of the West play, it's gonna be really challenging, it's gonna be really hard. But I think he can still do it, you know? Because he is not touched, you know, right now to the last 2-3 minutes. Um, he's gonna get some more Gondonites. He's gonna get some archers, potentially go for the upgrades here, for the rangers. And if he gets the rangers on the field, and if he, if he manages to protect them with the pikemen against the spider riders, he can actually do some work. Because rangers are also gonna be effective against the kiff troll. Um, I can't tell that if he's expecting the kiff troll to be on the field already. But again, fairy is also, you know, a really great goblin player. And if you are really good with one faction, you also know how to play against this faction. So I'm expecting him to expect this Kiv Troll and to have some defense against it. 
We have two arches now. That should be okay, I think. But again, he needs to keep those arches alive. And I don't see any pikemen. There is one pikeman in the back of the farm. Um, but no pikemen around to protect those arches. Even though he knows that spiderlings are on the field. The thing is that he has command points capped almost. He has 585 command points only and he can't make more units right now. That's the problem. The spiderlings are trying to take down the farm. He, was, he now was able to see the cave trolls. He has already two of them on the fields, by the way. Uh, Man of the West player is going for a tower, which should not be very effective in a situation like this. You can still, you know, kind of buy some time. Pikeman, they won't be able to deal any kind of damage. Rylan Cole is gonna be ready for the next fights, but Keefbats and Warchan gonna be ready for the Goblin play Imperialist. He has two Keef Trolls, three battalions of Spider Riders, a lot of Goblins, and even Spider Links. So he has definitely more units, which is gonna be really hard. At, at this point, you don't need to go for an attack with the Man of the West player, I think. I mean, you can always use your Gondor Knights for the poke, for the pressure. But you should not look for an all-out fight in a situation like this. Man of the West player should try now to defend himself without losing too much. Uh, good PFME, thank you for the follow, man. Appreciate it. Hope you're gonna enjoy your stay, buddy. There is a tower, and he will be putting arches inside. Building a fr uh, farm in the front, um, you know, to force the enemy units to go around it. But again, he has two cave trolls, a lot of spider riders. Those units are gonna deal significant amount of damage to this tower. Especially the cave trolls. Six power points collected now by the goblin player. He's getting more and more of those cave trolls. He might even go for the upgrade and get some giants if necessary. But I don't think it's necessary. At least right now. Iomir was able to get level 4. Again, that's gonna give him the money he needs. But the problem is, he also needs to expand. He needs to get some more... Um, command points as fast as possible. Going for the marketplace now, and the rangers are joining the fight. Now in a seat, ooh, that was a beautiful... That's what I'm talking about. You see that plus 18 for every single spider rider he's able to kill? Because Iomir is now level 4. The game was freezing a second. I was really afraid that, you know, Imperialis is, you know, getting his laptop crashed again. Which is hopefully not gonna be the case in this finals. Kill is available. In the worst case, oh, there was a beautiful hit from this troll. Holy moly, man, knocking the knocking down the entire battalion. He might be able to get away still. Yes, that's gonna be the case. Um, that's a quite risky move, not gonna lie. That's a giant army, and I don't think that this army from Men of the West is gonna be enough to take down these units here. Um, unless he's gonna make a mistake. I mean, we always need... We are, we are always, you know, commentating a scenario which is gonna be perfect executed from both the players but that's rarely happening you know what i'm saying sometimes the player decides to randomly run into the pikeman with all of his calf that might be a possibility that can be done you know it would be a huge mistake but in a situation like this when you end up losing every single spider rider battalion you have you're gonna give your <laughs> opponent a lot of cash because of the outlaw leadership a lot of power points and a lot of experience i think that's why they are both playing super safe because they know that one mistake can change the outcome of the game. Marketplace, Grand Harvest almost purchased. Level 3 farms now here in the front. In the back almost level 3 as well. So Man of the West player is also getting Camper. <laughs> Just go Giants. So <laughs> he's going Giants now. <laughs> he's gonna go for the upgrade and go for the Giants. Um, <laughs> Imperialist is not happy. He's like, Camper, come and fight me. I mean, fighting that army would be a stupid move. But he's, look at this, he's getting more and more money. Marketplace now with the Grand Harvest. He's gonna get more money from those farms outside. Uh, okay, I'm gonna have a fight. Cave Trolls are using, one of them were using the Goblin Troll, by the way. Um, to scare the enemy units, run into different directions. Now they are trying to disengage, trying to bring the fight to the tower. There is a Archer Battalion inside the tower, and uh, Imperial is not gonna fall for that. Gary isn't happy about that fight, which makes sense, because he doesn't have fear resistant if, without the statue being close enough to the unit. That means the Goblin player can always do that over and over again, and he indeed, look at this, he has already a Goblin in his hands, so he's gonna do that for the next fight as well. A lot of Gondor Knights are here though. 
Look at this. Look the range. Also really big. And the effect you can see. They are running away. Um, that can be... You know, kind of... You can actually avoid that when you have some leadership from some heroes. That are including the fear and terror resistance. Or when your units are level 5. Wildman of Dunland is gonna be ready for the next fight. Um, Lumber Mills are coming up now for the Goblin player to get some more money. Um, the thing is that... What the fuck is this like? Hmm. The thing is that there are not many trees around. And Lumber Mills are not gonna be that effective. And now we're gonna have some giants joining the fight. To actually take down those structures from a safe distance. Okay. He's kinda going for attack on the Fissure, level 3. Because he was expecting giants. He is, he's even going for the fire drakes, by the way. I don't know about that commitment. Ooh, the hit from the troll. And look at this giant. Oh my god, he lost so many Gondonites right there. Um, but all battalions are still remaining on the field. So he might be able to get away with all of them. If he doesn't get knocked down all the time. Which is being the case, unfortunately. He will, will be forced to be used. One Gondonite, two Gondonites were able to make it out. But he's gonna lose this battalion for sure here in the back. Alright. Yes, that's gonna be the case. He lost the battalion, he lost his heal. He luckily didn't use... He also used Riding Call on them, so he lost, like, a lot. Without being able to take down the structure, which is level 3, by the way. And has 6,000 health. So, taking that down, especially when the when the trolls are around, is quite hard. So, maybe that was a mistake. But he needs to do that. Now, we have Fire Drakes from the Fissure level 3. Giants are joining from the for the Siege on these towers. Against Micro, yeah. I mean, maybe it's laggy, but I, it's not because of me, guys, I think. Okay, level 2 barracks, level 3 archer range. He also purchased the fire arrow upgrades, by the way, for those rangers. Um, he might also go for the blacksmith soon, for the upgrades. Especially the banner carry upgrades might be actually quite worth. Uh, for, the, for the long shot, for the rangers, you know, once they're level 2, they can use the long shot. Uh, white man, cave pets, and warchan are gonna be ready for the fights, and that's what I'm talking about. The giant from a safe distance is gonna be able to take down those structures. We have Boromir, the captain of Gondor, joining the fights though. Once he's level two, it's gonna be effective against those half troll swordsmen and against those pikemen and goblin warriors, spider riders as well, to stun them. And it looks like you wanna commit. He definitely gonna commit. Okay. Ranges in the back in a safe spot. He will be able to take down the mountain giants. Fire drakes are popping off. You can see the fire animation coming through. Wildman of Dunland on top of the rangers. We have upgrades for those half troll swordsmen. They are quite tough and super hard to take down. Uncle Aragon, thank you for the follow, man. Appreciate it. Hope you're gonna enjoy your stay. Um, okay, that was a long shot, I think. Yeah, that was a long shot from the rangers, but Fairy doesn't have a way to win this game as he lost almost everything. And also the game number two will be won by the Russian player Imperialist. He's now only two wins away from winning the finals, guys. Alright, guys, game number three is all about to begin. This time again, Dwarves against Goblins, but on the map Holin. Thanks for streaming. Thanks for watching, man. Thanks for tuning in. I really appreciate it. Dwarves against Goblins, two of the most mobile factions of Rise of the Witch King. For the game number 3, Imperialist has the advantage, he is leading 2-0 against his opponent Fairy, and he's only 2 wins away from winning this finals. On the right side we have the Goblin uh, Dwarf player Imperialist, sorry, and on the left side we have the Goblin player Fairy. Uh, Rag Ragano93, thank you so much for the follow Ragano, I really appreciate it, hope you're gonna enjoy your stay buddy. Alright, uh, 2 mineshafts for the Dwarf player. On the other side, we will have an early barracks or early goblin cave for the goblin player. In a map, in this map, Holin, we have war creeps in the middle of the map. Troll creeps protecting this inns at the left and at the right side. And also war creeps around this area and around this area. So in total, we have four war layers and two troll layers. All of warriors is coming up. So this time, no uh, archer rain start like he was doing for the, for the game number one. And the first goblin warrior is gonna join the battlefields pretty soon. He didn't pick any power point ability just yet. And I'm assuming the dwarf player is obviously gonna start with the rallying coal. I mean with the dwarves you can also start with heal, which is not very great for the first power point. 
uh, and also rebuild. That can be situationally good, but you know, most of the time you will see dwarves starting with the rallying call. And the goblins, kinda, I would say 70% to 30%, they are starting also most of the time with the war chants, but more and more also with the keef bats. Again, depends on matchup and depends on the situation. Uh, he is from Belgium. He's not a German player. <laughs> it's a Belgium. It's from Belgium. Right. Um, he's gonna creep the troll at the top right side. What he's doing right now is he's luring the troll away from the lair guys. And as the troll is gonna go back, you can see he's not attacking the units. So that's why the creeping here is super easy and he was able to do that. He thought, you know, the only damage he took was from the troll as he was falling down. So you can do that without taking any damage, pretty much. By luring the troll away first. Um, the goblin player on the other side is gonna go for the creep as well. He's not gonna try to deal damage. Which might not be the greatest call. Maybe he is not expecting to be able to deal damage. But that was, his, that was also his mistake for the first game. Now Guardians are coming, they should be able to protect this Mineshaft and the Dwarf player is gonna be able to capture this in. That's gonna give him the chance to get some get some Hobbits to fight for him. Uh, battle Wagon's gonna join the battlefield pretty soon from the Forge. Two Goblin Keeps this time only, he didn't go for the third one and gonna immediately go for the Spider Pit. Spider Pit I think is gonna be good against the Battle Wagons and against the Guardians. Or spider links, I mean. And since he didn't go for the archer range, that might actually be a good position and good situation for the goblin player fairy. And yeah, he's gonna also get some hobbits. They are, I think, you know, they are really cheap and they give you a lot of power because only 150 each. That's gonna be the second war creep for fairy. What? He didn't finish that? Really? Uh, he didn't, for some reason, kill the rubble. <coughs> uh, that means he didn't get uh, level 2 on his units and also not the treasure from the creep. Um, I don't know what happened here. Maybe he failed creeping or something? I can't tell. Barry, by the way, still didn't uh, didn't pick any power points just yet from the spellbook, guys. This is also kind of random and questionable. I think he's just holding and waiting for a, for a you know situation in which he can choose... If you're gonna go with the cave pads or the running coal. Um, thank you for the follow, friendly. Appreciate it. Hope you're gonna enjoy your stay, buddy. Um, the creep will be secured by the dwarf player imperialist, and yes, battle wagons are coming. The first one is joining the fight already. Uh, he might now go for the double buff, but remember the goblin player still didn't pick anything just yet, so he can always go for the cave bats and nullify the enemy leadership from the battle wagon. Uh, battle wagon, however, gonna be super effective against the goblins as well, as you can see that you know they are just he's just trampling them to death super easily. Uh, fairy can secure this creep. This rubble will be rebuilding over time. We have now two battalions of spider links. Fissure is coming up. So he doesn't he doesn't go for the spider pit upgrade just yet. So he wanna keep those spider links for now. And might be able to get some spider riders later on. Um, Battle Wagon is inside the mineshaft, alongside with two hobbits and two guardians. So he has a lot of units. And that's the thing. Sometimes you don't see what he has <laughs> until they come out from the mineshaft and go for a big push. So if he gets them out all from this mineshaft, he will have a massive army and it's gonna be again, like in the game number one, super difficult for the goblin player to defend the upcoming attack. He started luckily with the keef pads, so I'm assuming he will be going for the banner carry upgrade on this battle wagon for the double buff action. Yes, that's being the case, but the double buff can get negated again uh, from the keef pads. I mean, at least the leadership from the banner carry upgrade on the battle wagon. He is holding his rallying call. Still, he doesn't need to get the rallying call actually to win this fight. Can win that without the buff easily. Luckily, uh, the goblin player was able to destroy one of the mineshafts. That's what you need to do, and it looks like you want to go for attack. Three 
Battalions of Guardians, with the double buff from the Rallying Call and the Banner Carrier upgrade on the Battle Wagon, they gonna hit really hard, guys, really hard. Almost 5 power points collected, so you can always go for the heal in the worst case to keep this Battle Wagon alive, and Rallying Call was used. After all, Swordman will be joining the fight, and he's still holding his cave pads. He needs to use it as fast as possible, there is no other way to deal with this army. Rebuild is gonna be ready, so he can use the rebuilds to keep this mineshaft alive if he wants to. Cave pads are still available, he still didn't use it. He can even go for the war chance now if he wants to. Um, no heal, so cave pads will be finally used after the future got destroyed. Battle Wagon was using the oil barrel. Tainted land will be choose and uh, place actually. So that means the leadership from this battle wagon is getting negated, as you know. And it's gonna go probably down to the spiderlings. Yes, that's gonna be the case. But more reinforcements gonna follow. However, this is a great spot to fight. You just don't wanna stand on the fire and take damage over time. Because on the tainted land, all the units that gonna come come, uh, come out afterwards will have also the buff. 50% uh, increased damage and armor. But you need to definitely make sure to destroy those two mineshafts and the one in the back as fast as possible, you know. He's gonna destroy one of them, luckily, with the spider links. Might even go for the second one, but you know, he has so many, so many guys. That's really hard to destroy all of them at the same time, without Infrealis being able to get some more reinforcements on the field. Okay, that's interesting gameplay here from the dwarves. I like that, super offensive. You know, he pretty much camps here all game long. Um, and to avoid that from happening, you need to scout the map all the time. You know? Offense is the best defense. For that, we have 450 command points only for the uh, Goblin Player Fairy. 5 power points collected after uh, Tainted Land and Keith Pads. Another Battle Wagon is joining the fights with Hobbits. Around. Uh, we have 600 command points for the Dwarf player Imperialist, 5 power points collected after Rallying Call and Rebuild. You can go for the heal. I think heal is a great choice, especially when you have those battle wagons on the field. Because you need to try to keep them alive, you know. They're quite expensive as you know. Um, still only barracks and forge works. I like the way that Goblin player is still being able to win those fights, slowly, but surely. Trying to deny all the map control, and there is a trash on the ground. The creep got rebuilt over time. Um, yeah, he has only Spider Pit level 1. I mean, actually, Spider, when you think about it, Spider Riders wouldn't do much in this case anyway. You could maybe get to the backline and kill those hobbits. You need to find a way to kill, uh, to kill this battle wagon, I think. Which is easier said than done, you know? He's microing with the battle wagon quite well. You can always go in the worst case, you know, enter the mineshaft and get away. He's trying to fight for the map control now with those spiderlings, but there are not many left from the battalion. And I don't think they will be able to take down this mineshaft over there. Yeah, you know, I think um, it looks really good once again for Imperialist. 650 command points, 7 power points collected after rebuild and rallying call. Um, even though the Goblin player has also 650 command points, Vulcan but he has one of those Barrow 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 Thank you for that so much. Hey Dario, my friend, welcome to the stream. Sorry guys, I was not focusing on the chat that much. <laughs> Hello! <laughs> Yo, they welcome to the stream. Dan Stuff, welcome to the stream. So many viewers. 122 viewers, guys. That's amazing. Guys, make me Twitch partner, please. For that we need only 75 viewers, you know, then you will have always the option to change the quality and we will have more tournaments going on. So watch my stream 75 average viewers and we're gonna get Twitch partners. <laughs> uh, yeah, actually Imperialist is getting kinda uh, wrecked in the map control fights lately. Even though he, 
you know, I think Imperialis is mainly focusing or was mainly focusing around this area. That's why he's losing the map control fight in the middle and at the bottom side of the map. Watchman911, thank you for the follow. Hey Quega, my man, welcome to the stream. Very striking back. Yeah, hopefully. We have 700 command points still though for Imperialist. Wow. Vulkit cheered X500, do a siege tournament. Helm's Deep Hype and H E R R R R R R R R R R R R R R R Oh my goodness, I need to I need to change the alerts, I think, man. It is too loud, right? It's crazy. It's crazy. Yeah, what is that? The the woman is screaming like crazy, guys. Sorry for that, man. Guys. But thank you for the 500 pity bombs, though. Borf. <laughs> Alright. Uh, I think Imperialis is still being in a good situation. He has still double buff on those units, as you know. Um, but now Fairy is getting some stronger units. Spider Pit, level 1. Still Fissure, level 1. So, But he has a lot of Spiderlings. And those Half-Troll Swordsmen will also be hard to deal with. Remember... After all, Swordsmen, they can't get trampled down. That means Battle Wagon is not going to be as effective against them as it is against Goblin Warriors, you know? So with that being said, I think Fairy has still the chance to come back to this game. Yes, Dwarven Riches, which he was just using on this mineshaft to get more resources. That's like a Dwarf version of the Industry spell from Mordor and Isengard. Uh, but Scavenger is being unlocked. That's actually quite rewarding against Dwarves. Especially if you end up killing those battle wagons, you know, you get a lot of cash. Uh, Keef Bad, Stinted Land and War Chant are ready. So he has double buff with the War Chant and Tainted Land. And now Azok is joining the fight. Uh, we don't have any single hero just yet from Imperialis on the field. I don't know why not. Alright. Um, yeah, I mean, he can now go for a push before he's gonna be able to build this well. I think he can actually win that fight. If he micros them well, the spider links in the front, they should not fight against the pikemen. What you wanna do in a situation like this is you wanna use your half troll swordsman, but he's gonna use tainted land anyway for the buff. And Azok keeps chasing this battle wagon, by the way. He also used the cave pads here to deny the leadership from the battle wagon. Could be able to get in safety by entering the mineshaft. So what he did was pretty much right clicking on the battle wagon with Azok as he's chasing him down all the time. Uh, unfortunately he ended up losing all his spider links here and you don't want to chase too much. I think he wants to protect those arches in the back with the half troll swordman. But you gotta be careful. Um, more reinforcements are coming, he has also more guardians and hobbits inside. You need to kill those mine shafts as fast as possible. Half troll swordmen are quite strong as you know. Azok is still only level 1. He was not able to catch the battle wagon. Yulda has to be careful. Should be able to get into the tunnel. Nope, he's gonna just build another tunnel here instead. Um, nice fight here for Fairy. He will be able now to clean those mineshafts one by one. Pretty good. Oh, the tunnel has been taken down unfortunately. Will he be able to finish the rubble? That's gonna be close, but he should be able to do that, yes. Unfortunately, more hobbits are coming from the inn. And now we have King Brent on the field. Uh, once he's level 2, the slam shots will be super effective against those units. And now they are off the tainted land, so they don't have the buff anymore. And he should be now going back. Azog still only level 1. Uh, 10 power points collected for the dwarf player now after having Riding Cole rebuilt and Dwarven Riches. Uh, 750 command points, chat. That's a lot, by the way. On the other side, 725, also not bad. 10 power points collected after Warchan, Tinted Land, Keith Bats, and the Scavenger. Scavenger is quite rewarding because they keep fighting all the time, so he's getting a lot of money from that all the time, pretty much. Okay, Oil, bo oil Bottle was used, level 3 unlocked. King Brand is now gonna hit level 2 pretty soon. Um, it's a bad fight to take for Fairy here, definitely, but he's gonna move for another attack here. He might be able to take down this level 3 mineshaft, that would be actually huge. Whenever you can take down those level 3 structures, 
you know, and you lose for that three goblin warriors, it is absolutely worth it. But it's not looking like he's gonna make it. The first reason is the you know damage output from those goblins is quite limited. The level three structure has 3,500 health. He's able to shoot at enemy units like the fortress, and he has revealed anyway, so he's gonna kill all the units and the mine shaft is back to full health. <laughs> Unfortunate. He lost a lot of units right there. Uh, he's also spamming a lot of uh, hobbits, by the way. Archer range level 2. We're gonna have some, now some men of deal units joining the fight. Um, hmm. What should be the plan here? The thing is, I think cave trolls are not very effective against the dwarves in a situation like this. Because the battle wagon is also giving you fear resistance, if I'm not mistaken, with the banner carry upgrade on it. Now he has one with the with the well. So they, they're gonna heal up over time and they have leadership. Fire arrow upgrade purchased by the way on those men of tail. That means their damage output on the enemy structures will also be insane. Um all of a sudden the game is turning again in the favor of Imperialist. With the right transition into the right units. Uh Keith Bats are available spider allies are available i hope he's gonna use it for offensive purposes and try to take down those mine shafts with them that could, would be great and that's gonna be the case he's gonna use them offensively they deal a lot of damage to the structures by the way guys you will see what i mean now you see that's a level three mine shaft by the way but the problem is can he defend himself with this army against this army that's gonna be hard he has cave pads again that's gonna nullify the leadership king brand is here though level three uh, it looks like he was not even able to take down this mineshaft. Oh no. Uh, Men of Deal were just in time to protect it. He's gonna be able to take down a level 1 mineshaft. It's not the worst case. But it's not the way you wanna use your Spiderlings special summon for. So it was not worth it, I think, to take down only one level, <laughs> one level 1 mineshaft actually for that. But that's the beautiful part about those mobile factions like dwarves and goblins. He had no units around, and all of a sudden he has a lot of units being ready to defend, you know? Okay, Warchan was used. King Brand in the back. We're gonna look out for the slam shot ability, which is gonna be used now. He's gonna use it. Hopefully, nope, he's not using it just yet. Battle wagons are disengaging. Try to kill King Brand, maybe. Slam shot is incoming, knocking down the enemy units. Again, you know, you can see the battle wagons are not able to trample down those half tall swordmen. And there is not a mineshaft close by, but Undermine will be used right on top of the enemy army. And more, more units are coming. You think I don't have a mineshaft around? Bam! <laughs> and then kill all the units first and get more reinforcements. We'll be, however, able to take down the mineshaft. That's okay, I think. Uh, King Brand has to disengage, man. But more reinforcements are coming from the middle. Azok is here. Um, there is a mineshaft here at the bottom right side. And it looks like he doesn't want to chase him. The King Brand will be able to get away. He needs to rebuild the spider pit, which he lost before in a goblin cave. Um, there was a Man of Deal special summon, by the way, before. I forgot that. I forgot to see that. Uh, 750 command points. 700 command points for the goblin player. Fairy. 11, almost 12 power points collected. So that game might actually go to the late game. And I don't remember the last time when I've seen a late game <coughs> dwarves against goblins, you know. Monies. Okay. Uh, dwarf player has around 2000. And goblin player has 1300. MQS, welcome to the stream. Okay. King Brand is level 5 now. Um, I think this is one of the situations when, for example, the Goblin player would ever go for the Drog of Dragon Lord, right? And you get this King Brand to level 7, I think the Beast Slayer arrow will be super effective against that dragon. So it, it would not be a great choice. In a situation like this, I think he has a lot of counter units now, Extrovers and Men of Deal. King Brand. Okay, there are more mineshafts coming up just in front of the base. And yeah, look how many units he has around. 
That's a lot, by the way. Best of seven, yes. Yeah, I don't see her coming back from the situation anymore. It was looking good for him for a for the you know last five to ten minutes, but we have seen a couple of mistakes. Oh, Azok will be taken down here. There is no way of escaping. Yes, Azok is down. One of the mistakes was the Spider Ally Special Summon. I was expecting it to deal much more damage. So what he was doing is pretty much he went for a base trade moment. Remember, at the same time he was getting attacked from those Men of Dale Special Summon with the Fire Arrow upgrade, you know? So, he was losing the Spider Pit, he lost a couple of those tunnels and even a Goblin Cave. And during this time he was not able to deal any counter damage. He was able to take down one level 1 Mineshaft, you know, that's... Not the traits you are looking for. And yeah, I mean... It looks like he can't actually deal with that army, you know? No spider riders. Oh, 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 there is someone who can deal, but okay. I missed that one, even though it was not the greatest summon, I think. He was still able to get away with many units. But the Watcher is here, guys. The Watcher. Imperialist, more like Imperator. <laughs> Rambo, my man, welcome to the stream. Doesn't take when I click. GG. Okay, I mean, the score now will be 3 0. And unbelievable, but it's truth. It's the truth, guys. Imperialist so far is undefeated in this tournament. He didn't lose a single game since the round of 16 until now. Not a single game. Slamshot was used, he's just gonna demolish everything and the game number 3 will be won again by the Russian player Imperialist and he's only one win away from getting, from winning the tournament. We are ready with the game number 4 which might potentially be the last game in the series if Imperialist Goblin Faction will be able to win again against Fairy's Man of the West, this time on the map Rohan 2. And I think... It would be great now to see Fairy winning at least one game. On the right side we have the Green Goblin player Imperialist having a fantastic series so far. 3-0 against the Man of the West player Fairy on the left side. On the map Rohan 2. I mean Rohan 2 is probably one of those maps which is really good against Goblins. Because Goblin faction, uh, Goblin players they like to play on big maps. Why are you asking? Glad you're asking. Because in big maps they can actually, you know expand much much easier unseen all the time while small maps are maps goblin players don't like to play that much all right we have early barracks coming up for the man of the west player into the second farm it looks like you want to go for the creep yes he already set the waypoints from the barracks so it's gonna be the rohan spearman units and they will be moving immediately to the work layer at the left side on the other side we will have spider link uh, spider pit start from the goblin player into the spider links which is gonna be good actually for the man of the west player because he's gonna go for the creep so the plan is simple what he's gonna do now is he's gonna go for the creep and by the time he's gonna be done with the creeping the soldiers will be joining the fight as well and then he's gonna group them and go for a push and since he started with the spider pits with the spider links um, he can't really fight against the pikemen. With that being said, I think if he groups them nicely and if he makes sure to protect the soldiers against the spider lynx, he can actually deal a decent amount of damage. Let's see if this is gonna be the case. The goblin cave is coming up now <clears throat> for the goblin player imperialist. The creep will be secured now by fairy. Another farm is coming up. And yeah, he's gonna group. And now he's holding now. He needs to definitely go for a, for more. For, I can't talk, guys. Sorry. For one more pikeman. Uh, and yeah, the spiderings are moving from this area. Right in front. In oh, he's he saw them nicely. You don't want to run through them. They're gonna deal so much damage to you. Uh, by the time those units from Men of the West arrive here, he already demolished the spider pit and going for the fissure now. Only one spider link and demolished afterwards. <clears throat> the soldiers are here now. Uh, the spider links are looking for a farm. Needs to get pikemen on the field as fast as possible. Rallying coal is available for the man of the west player. 
He's going for the goblin archer units and placing the goblins right in front of the tunnel to keep this tunnel alive. On the other side, the soldiers are not attacking those spiderlings and they will be able slowly but surely to take down this farm. Important here is to keep the spiderlings alive because he has only one of them on the field and he demolished the spider pits. Remember, Keith pads will be used to debuff the enemy units. He's gonna try to take down this tunnel as fast as possible. Archers are coming. Can now deal damage actually as they are coming out. Yes, that's being the case. Case he's gonna you know deal decent amount of damage to the goblin archers. Can he finish the tunnel? That's the question. Uh, Spiderlings were able to take down the farm. They're also coming back, almost level two. That's gonna be nice. Uh, the debuff is real. He might be able to save the rubble, maybe. That's gonna be close. But he will be able to save the rubble, guys. That's actually not bad, as the rubble will be rebuilding over time. <clears throat> Ossie, welcome to the stream. Morgum, you're welcome to the stream. Nice one. Um, yeah, one for one, actually, because he also lost one of those farms. But this tunnel is more important than the farm Man of the West player lost in the back. These farms, what you are building at the very beginning of the game, are the most important farms. Because those farms are gonna hit level 2 and later on level 3 first. Another attack is incoming. We have now one Gondor Archer Battalion on the field as well. They are strong against Spiderlings, by the way. After all, Swordsmen are here, though. The elite Swordsmen from the Goblin faction. Um, hmm. I think that's a risky move. He's going back though with those archers and going for the sable next. I think in a situation like this, after seeing the half troll swordman on the field, you don't want to go for, you know, you don't want to send your units out one by one or two by two. You want to group and I think that's the only possible way to deal the damage you are looking for. Okay, he's going to be able to take down this farm potentially again. He needs to be careful against the archers here in the back. Archers are really strong against spiderlings if you didn't know. He doesn't even see them just yet. He sees them now. He needs to be careful. Is he gonna commit to that? Looks like he wanna commit to that. And he's not gonna be able to take it down. He's gonna lose the battalion. And remember, it was a spider pit delete, guys. In the meantime, we have a fight in the middle of the map. This fight should be looking good for the goblin player. But the archers in the back are putting in some nice work. One half twelve swordman battalion will be taken down. That's really important because they cost 400 each. They are quite expensive. Um, as he's getting more archers on the field, he should be having, you know, not a hard time to deal with them. The tunnel is rebuilding up over time, as you know. Going for a potential sneaky attack. But the Gondo Knights, they will be able to see them. Yes, they will be able to see them. Uh, the thing is that Gondo Knights can't fight 1v1 against those half troll swordsmen. They are really good, really good against Kev, by the way. Paran, welcome to the stream. Um, the Man of the West player is playing kind of defensively with those archers, but with that stage on the front, you know, he should be protecting this area quite easily. Targets the half troll swordsman with your archers, and then you are good to go. Uh, the Goblin player has still 600 command points available, by the way, chat. That's a lot of command points. 4 power points collected. 410 command points only for the Man of the West player Fairy. 4 power points collected as well. Um, by the way, thank you so much for the follow, Pits Ela. Why is Rohan good for men? Um, Rohan is not good for men, but it's bad for the Goblins, you know? Because it's a small map. And goblins, but also dwarves are looking for those big maps. So you can, you know, get your tunnels when you are playing goblins. Uh, you can hide them better on big maps. The, the opponent player has harder time to find them on a map like Westfold. While Rohan 2 is easy to discover for the Man of the West player. So you can actually look. As you can see, there are no tunnels close to the side from the Man of the West player. But on bigger maps... That will be the case all the time. So the goblin player will be attacking you from many, many sides. Since he has so many ways to hide those tunnels. Banners. Right 
Okay, we have cave trolls though. No heal trolls. Okay. Um, the debuff is there with the cave pad, so the leadership is getting negated. Oh, that was a nice hit. We're surrounding them quite nicely. We need to take down the troll as fast as possible if you can. For the Gondor Knights, oh, they climbed so beautiful for the for the attack with the with the tree. Uh, the troll will be taken down though, but Tainted Land will be used here, and uh, another cave troll is coming. The debuff is real. If you can take down the cave pads as fast as possible, so you get the leadership again from the statue, which is gonna be the key. But it looks like even in a bad fight like this, there was a beautiful heal, by the way. Man of the West player will be able to deal. There are just too many archers for the cave trolls and for the half troll swordsmen to deal with. In a situation like this, maybe Spider Riders could be a great choice because he has barely any pikemen. He has pikemen, but not enough. Um, but the thing is that, you know, Man of the West player has to go now for attack, and which is gonna happen now. He has rallying call ability available, unlike the goblin player Imperialist. He has the buff advantage now, but we have two more cave trolls joining the fight. With the resource income from the command point 625, he has actually, you know, enough resource income to make all the time half troll swordsman, going even for the second fissure now, keeping up the goblin spam from those two goblin caves, and to deny that from happening, the man of the west player has to focus a bit more on the map control. Okay, goblin troll is incoming, not the best one, didn't actually affect anything. Uh, one cave troll will be taken down, rallying call will be used, Eomir is joining the fight. Uh, take down this troll as fast as possible, this troll is living way too long. Hitting even level 2 here, the other one he's trying to kill them both at the same time. We need to kill them one by one. We lost a lot of units here during this time, but he should be still able to good to go. Yomi is gonna put in some nice work giving leadership to those uh, Gondor Knights, as you know. Uh, Half Troll Swordmen, again, they can't get trampled down by those calf units. And Gondor Archers, they can't run away against the uh, Goblin Warriors. Goblin Warriors are faster than Archers, as you know. They will be able to catch them. But he was able to destroy one of those tunnels. The Archers in the back are recovering. In this situation, you need to try to save them, kinda. But in the meantime, Goblin player is preparing himself for a potential attack with Goblin Warriors and Half Troll Swordsmen. The Archer range, the Barracks and the Stables are all still level 1. Man of the West player was able to win that fight, now try to take down some tunnels. Hill Trolls are coming though. There is a tower in the middle of the map which is gonna be hard to take down for now, but he's gonna get some more Half Troll, I mean, uh, Cave Trolls I think. The level 2 farm is gonna be taken down though, unfortunately. Or a rebuild was used, that's okay. You wanna save this farm? Definitely. He will be able to save it as well. Okay, after all, Swordman, they're gonna be taken down here. With the EOMA leadership against the Gondor Knights. There is a tunnel here in this small pathway. Um, I think with the, you know, with the tower in the middle of the map, this side is kind of protected, and that's what he needs to do around the top side, around the right side, and around the left side as well. Hill trolls are coming, we know they are dealing significant amount of damage to the structures, and Warchan was used on them. Oh, Spear Troll is incoming, there we go. But the farm, almost level 3 farm has been taken down, remember rebuild was on cooldown because it was used before on this farm. Great attack here from Imperialist. He should be also able to take down that, uh, this farm in the back, potentially. And more units are coming. Ooh, how, more, more pikemen and half-troll swordsmen. They were just passing through the middle. The well is gonna be the target. He will be able to take it down. This farm is gonna go down potentially as well in the back. Yeah, this is gonna be the case. They are dealing a lot of damage. They are still being buffed from the war chant. Um, we should be able to defend that one. Gondor Knights, they are finally making a move. But look at this, more units are coming from the tunnels at the very same time. The thing is that even though he was able to defend himself nicely, the problem is that the goblin player has so much resource income with those 650 command points against <coughs> uh, 600 now, um, that he is able to spam all the time from double fissure to uh, those half troll swordsmen and those hill trolls, or half troll pikemen in this case. Ok, 
cam. Come on, guys. They gotta be careful here. There is a well, so they will be able to recover. He's going for the second well. They buy, they stack, by the way, so you, you heal up pretty much faster. He needs to now replace those farms. Archer range is finally level 2. So we're gonna get some rangers. They are gonna be very effective against those half troll pikemen. And half troll swordsmen. Um, Lumber mills are coming up for the goblin player. Even on a bad map for the goblins, Imperialis is performing quite well. Going for another attack from this area. We'll be able to scout the farm and take it down. Yomi is running from left to right all the time. And Man of the West player once again is playing super defensively. Um, not risking to do anything crazy. Farm is gonna go down for sure. And let's see how much damage he will be able to deal now. I think Warchan is still on cooldown, yes, but Keef pets are gonna be available if necessary. He's gonna try to take down this level 3 farm, which seems to be unprotected. After all, Swatman, they can't get trampled down. And it looks like he won't be able to use Rebuild just yet. It's still on cooldown, if I'm not mistaken. Rebuild has such a weird picture, you can't tell if it's on cooldown or not sometimes. Lone Tower Special Summon is gonna be ready. With that, he might go for a push. Now he has rangers on the field, so what he can do is go for a push, use the Lone Tower Special Summon offensively, and put the rangers inside of it. He's gonna now go a bit forward, which is, again, super defensive playstyle. I mean, you don't want to be too close to the fortress, because then he can al you know, always make a giant expansion and take it down. <clears throat> but now he needs to realize, okay, units are coming from this area, and I need to take down, the, down this tunnel, but there is a tower which is gonna protect that. He, need, he now needs to first of all take down this troll creep here. But he's moving also at the very same time from this area, which is smart. Now you need to fight for the map control. You have now in the middle of the map two towers. They should be enough to protect you. There are no arches inside of this one, but arches inside of this one. Um, half troll swordmen are quite tanky and it takes ages even for the tower to take them down. And he's just gonna ignore this area. And gonna go for you know take down this war creep first and then move from this attack you know attack from this side i mean i think that's gonna be the plan spider allies special summon will be used though let's see this farm is gonna go down for sure the thing is he has only one level three farm left this farm is also gonna be taken down or rebuild will be used never mind and the man of the west player is making a lot of towers which is gonna make it harder and harder for the goblin player to do anything about it and yeah i mean he will be forced to make some mountain giants or you know a lot of cave trolls to take down those towers and the spider allies special summon was by the way able to take down this level 3 farm that's massive maybe he should have saved the rebuilds for this farm and with that being said the gonzo player has not a single level 3 farm up on the field anymore the Spiderlings are gone though, and now he can do some counter-attack, which is happening right now. He will be able to take down one of those level 3 tunnels. That's really nice. Cave pads are being used to debuff the enemy units. There is a cave troll using the rocks, and the rubble will again will be, you know, re will be rebuilding over time. Yomi is coming. Take down the cave troll as fast as possible with the rangers. Gondo Knights are arriving as well. Cave pads are still flying around. Cave Troll will be taken down first from the Rangers. And heal will be used. It's a massive heal. And he should be easily able to win that fight. More units are coming from Fairy through the middle. And for me it looks like we will be able to get at least one more game after this one. Um, because he has a great defense. Tower nap. <laughs> and he's gonna demolish. And maybe after this game Imperialis is tilted enough that he's gonna make more mistakes. Because this game was now won by Fairy, and we're gonna jump into the game number 5, boys. The game number 5 is all about to begin, boys. Westfold, it is gonna be goblins against dwarves, two mobile factions on a giant map like Westfold. He chose the wrong Westfold, if I'm not mistaken. I might be wrong. Scream, thank you for the follow, man. Appreciate it. 1,300 followers, guys. Thank you so much for that. Oh, it's the right one. Beautiful. On the right side, we have the Dwarf player Imperialist leading this series 3-1 against the Goblin player Fairy. Utsku21, thank you so much for the follow as well. 
1301 followers. Beautiful. Tom Riddle, my friend. How are you doing today, Tom Riddle? Lord Voldemort. <laughs> How many games is it? Uh, we have seen already four games. This is the game number five. If Imperialist wins that, he will be winning the tournament. Um, you know, it's a best of seven series. So we have this game potentially might be the, the last game. If Fairy wins, we can go all the way to the game number seven. If we reach the game number seven, the final map will be Forts of Eisen. Two mineshafts into the archery range start from the dwarf player, by the way. And we're gonna have a spider pit start this time from the goblin player, Fairy. Uchi gang, welcome to the stream. Okay, boys. I think spider pit start can actually work on a map like this. It's a quite big map. And in both cases, for both factions, they need to try to expand through the sides. I mean, the dwarf player needs to make sure to get those mine shafts close to the area from the goblin player. And that's exactly what the goblin player is supposed to do as well. So we need to keep up the pressure all the time. There's a mine shaft around this area, and as you know, I think in a matchup like this, those signal fires are gonna be the key to it, to you know, the key to victory. Because whoever has those signal fires under his control will be able to see a lot more than his opponent. Again, in a matchup like this, this is gonna be super effective. Extroverts are joining the fight, and we're gonna have Hall of Warriors coming up. It looks like the. Um, I'm assuming. He's gonna go for... Yeah, there we go. He's gonna go for the creep on the work layer here. But spiderlings are coming. Okay, let's see. That might be interesting. Oh, the builder! He lost the builder to the work layer! Okay, I mean, Imperialis is tilted, guys. I can see that already. That's random, man. That should never happen, actually. <laughs> what? What a final again. Right, he's using cave pads. On the other side, Imperialis was using the rallying coal. Uh, more extroverts are coming, but they are being in a, in a bad spot here, actually. They should be still able to take down those spiderlings, but they are buying enough time. In the meantime, he, you know, he makes sure that he can't creep this. And spiderlings are actually dealing a lot of damage here. They're gonna hit almost level 2 here, but he's overcommitting maybe. Uh, retreating now wouldn't make any sense, as Imperialist is getting more and more units. But the problem is, he lost his builder that early into the game against the war creep you know at the very same time fairy is creeping so fairy i don't know if he was able to see that but fairy is actually being an advantage not because of his great gameplay but because of the great gameplay from the war player <laughs> all right uh both players are securing the creeps at the signal fires but it's gonna be 2-1 in favor of the goblin player this is his second creep as he's gonna be done very soon with this creep here uh, he keeps spamming more spider links, and the first goblin cave is up on the fields now. Goblin warriors are moving forward. Mm, okay, the dwarf player is moving from this area. The mineshaft is quite low. You will now notice that this creep is gone. And that's gonna be even the third creep here for the goblin player fairy. So he's gonna get three out of four war clairs from the map Westworld for himself. That's actually massive. There are some pikemen you need to avoid fighting with your spiderlings if possible. Get some goblin uh, goblins here to fight against them. Okay, another creep will be secured. Very well done here from Fairy. There is only one creep remaining and this is also gonna be gone pretty soon. This one is gonna be creeped by the dwarf player Imperialist. Okay, extroverts they are ready to defend. But every damage you are able to deal is it... It is worth it, I think. In a situation like this, if you are able to damage them a bit, you know, they cost 250 each, your units, are, you know, they cost only 100, the goblin warriors, and you take down one of them or two of them, it's, I think, okay, you know, it's not the worst trade ever. Okay, no more creeps left on Westfold, by the way, guys. Uh, the thing is that uh, the goblin player didn't capture this signal fire for himself just yet, for some reasons. He will be able to take down this mineshaft, which is really good. But he needs to run afterwards. You don't want to lose too much units to overcommit to that one mineshaft. Which he's doing right now. He will be able to get away with this level. With both of, with both of them, actually. And the one 
Battalion who is really low is level 2. That means they will be recovering up over time as well, which is really good. After all, Swartman are coming now. And once again, like in the like two games ago, the Dwarf player is trying to build himself a great outpost right in front of the base from the Goblin player and keep up the pressure all the time. Look at this, three mineshafts. So it's gonna be hard to take down every single one of them. It's really pretty much the same time, you know? Okay, he's moving for attack. Yes, rallying call ability available, and we have cave pads ready. But this time he has after all swordsmen. The thing is, the extroverts in the back, they are really hard to take down. He has three battalions of these and some units for the front line to tank the damage. But Azok is here that can change the facts. Azok is pretty strong as we know. Rallying call will be used, cave pads needs to be used, which is gonna be used now to debuff the enemy units. The spiderlings are looking for opportunity to get to the back line. They are trying to take down the mineshaft first. He has almost the power points he needs for the war chant. Will he go for it? That's the question. He needs to go for it, in my opinion, to win that fight. But he's gonna go for the tainted line instead. I hope he's gonna use it like this, but he's gonna use it like this. It's okay. So he has to buff now 50% increased damage and armor. But at the same time, he needs to also try to take down some of those structures. And I think that's the key to win, you know. You need to <clears throat> be multitasking. You need to defend yourself and at the same time try to deal some counter pressure. Those goblin warriors are idle, they are not doing much. And even with the tainted line and keef pads, <clears throat> look at this, the dwarfs are still winning. Um, yeah, the situation has been actually demolished, not even destroyed, kind of questionable. Azok is uh, level 3 by the way. That's a nice thing with level 2, you get some more money from killing the enemy units, which is really rewarding. Now he's finally moving with those goblin warriors, but he should not be able to deal enough damage, I'm assuming. Uh, because he has always units inside the mineshaft ready to come out and defend. Um, Azok is gonna be very important later on. Pacifist Mike, thank you so much for the follow man, appreciate it. Hope you're gonna enjoy your stay buddy. And pink and fluffy, thank you, appreciate it. Thank you for the follow, guys. Thank you so much for watching and for tuning in. All right, Forgeworks is almost up on the fields for the dwarf player. The statue is up again, and there are still a lot of units from Imperialist on the field. And even though the fact that he end up losing the build at the very beginning of the game doesn't matter too much, that he keeps up the pressure. Oh, he lost another builder, by the way. He just lost another builder here. Oh, that's really bad. Azok is now level 4 though. Great Battle Rage is unlocked. Spider Links, they gotta be careful. Spider Pits is level 1. Fissure is also only level 1 for now. And only one Goblin Cave up on the field. 550 command points available. Almost 7 power points collected for the Dwarf Player Imperialist after Rallying Call and Heal. On the other side, we have 625 command points collected for the Goblin Player Fairy. Nearly two power points collected after War Chant, Tainted Land, and the Keef Pad. So all five power point spells from the spellbook. Okay, he's gonna be able to take down this mine shaft in the back. There is still there are still two here around this area. Um, actually, with that move, Imperialist manages to keep the pressure so much that Gary is being scared to leave his side of the map. You know. Because unlike Imperialist, he doesn't have any offensive tunnels he can use to get back to his own side of the map. So in terms of expanding in macro, I would say that Imperialist is you know, doing a better job. Uh, indeed, there are almost no tunnels around this area, which is pretty much not even protected by the Dwarf player Imperialist. So Imperialist just you know, focuses on the one side of the map, in this case in the middle of the map. He is building multiple mineshafts, and drawing all the attention from his opponent and denying him to expand and denying him to actually go for offensive move. Right, he's gonna go for attack now. Um, I think in a situation like this, what could be great are cave trolls. Even though the effect will be getting kind of negated from the battle wagons. The thing is that he's now command points capped after losing those mine shafts in the middle of the map. And he can't get more units. He has more units than he's allowed to. <laughs> 10 power points collected. He's gonna go for the Hobbit special summon. Which will be used immediately. However, Alinkol is on cooldown. So can't be used to buff the damage from those Hobbits. 
We have the gang here with us. We have Samwise Gamgee. Uh, here we have uh, Peregrine Took. We have uh, Frodo. <laughs> we have Mary. We have everyone here. Azok is level 5 though. Azok is a Hobbit killer by the way. He's not even using his great battle rage yet. Which is doubling his damage output. Um, and even with the Hobbit special summon. By the way Hobbits are quite strong against heroes. So Azok has to be careful. Uh, the Dwarf player is not able to deal the damage he was looking for. The Hobbits... The heroes are chasing down those spiderlings for some reason. And Imperialis is uh, pinging something. I don't know what, what, he's ping what he's pinging. I can't really tell. Um, look at this command points from Imperialis, guys. Only 375 command points. So his command points kept now for the last 2 minutes. Can't make more units. On the other side, 500 command points for the goblin player. Luckily, his tunnels in the backside are pretty much untouched all game long. Um, this is also captured now by the Dwarf player as both the signal fires are gonna be under control from him, at least for a while. Azog is making a difference by the way, because there are right now no heroes beside Frodo and, and Sam, also side by side like always by the way. They're gonna leave Middle Earth pretty soon. So no King Brand, no Gloin, nothing like that on the field just yet. This mine shafts will be taken down, the oil bottles are actually... Damaging those spiderlings big time. Look at this when they are burning. It's so funny. <laughs> they will get away. Um, yeah, this fight will be won by the goblin player. And now he's going to be able to get this signal fire under his control as well. Going for the double fissure now. Spider pit only level 1 still. Spider, bite, spider riders not going to join the battlefield any soon. Um, but those spiderlings are also doing a great job all the time. But just map, map control wise, macro wise, we gotta give credits to Imperialis. I think he's doing a better job than Fairy does. He's just gonna demolish that mineshaft, just why not. Uh, Battle Dragon not gonna be super effective against South Troll Swordman. But he keeps spamming those Extrovers all the time. Extrovers, Guardian, Spikeman, that's his main army. Now he has some Battle Wagons to support the army. Azok is almost level 6. He's gonna be able to take down this mineshaft as well. That's really good. 500 command points now for Imperialist. There is a almost level 3 mil I mean, mineshaft here in between the structures. You need to keep that alive no matter what. He can always go in the worst case for the rebuild if he wants to. 650 command points. And I think he's gonna use the Spider Alliance special summon here to take down this structure. I'm pretty sure about that. He's also moving now for an offensive move with those half troll swordsmen. Let's see how much damage he will be able to deal. He needs to wait until this mineshaft is coming up to get in and defend himself. But uh, Warchan was used. The level 2 mineshaft is gonna go down. Spider Alliance special summon is here. Azok is here as well. That can be the attack that can change the outcome of the game. That can be the attack that brings Fairy the chance to go for the next game. And potentially even win 4 games in a row to beat Imperialist after being 3-0 behind. Rebuild will be used. It's just gonna delay. It's not gonna deny. The spiders are hitting like a truck, as you know, and the level 3 mineshaft, even with the help of rebuilds, will be still taken down. Azok was able, and Imperialist is gonna call it GG, a great game here from the goblin player, Barry, and we're gonna move to the game number 6, boys. There we go. The last game, I mean, that might be possibly the last game now, the game number 6, Imperialist 3 and fairy two victories so far the last game pot possibly or the game in which fairy could make the score even is gonna be played on the map sakura forest 2 goblins against men of the west and if fairy manages to win that we're gonna have the tiebreaker game on the map for of eisen and if fairy manages to win that tournament after being 3-0 behind that might be the greatest comeback of all time. On the bottom right side, we have the Man of the West player, Fairy, who lost three games in a row, but managed to win now two games in a row. I think he has a great confidence now, and confidence is gonna be that what matters in order to win those games. And his opponent on the top left side is the Green Goblin player, Imperialist, who had a fantastic start into the series, was undefeated so far till two games ago in this tournament, didn't lose a single game, until the moment Harry was able to win two games in a row against him. Right, we will have actually two farms, three farms up on the field. So I'm expecting from the Man of the West play here a stable start. The Goblin player on the other side is gonna go for a Spider Pit start. 
which makes a lot of sense on a map like this. Talking about the map Sakura Forest, Sakura Forest is, uh, I think, a big, bigger map than Forts of Ison is. That map should be favoring just matchup wise the Goblin Faction. There are so many possible ways you can actually, you know, hide your um, tunnels at, and also Spiderlings are, you know, getting pretty much invisible all the time because there are a lot of trees around. But we're gonna have a stable start here after three farms, so I'm assuming it's gonna be a stable delete. Which is gonna be the transition to the barracks and archery range at the same time. That's what I'm assuming it's gonna happen. But let's see. Um, the first spider link battalion is gonna be joining the fight. And this builder is looking to sneak one of those tunnels close to the side of the Man of the West player fairy. It's advanced stable start, lead stable start, yeah. Um, he can also just keep up the stable, you know, he's gonna go, he has now enough money to go for the barracks anyway in this case. So he might go for the second ba uh, battalion of Gondor Knights. On a map like this, you can actually split them, move with one of them through the bot side, with one of them through the top side. I think having those mobile units uh, under your control is gonna favor you a lot in a matchup like this. Again, on a map like Sakura Forest, you need to scout all the time, all the possible... Um, Pathways the goblin player might come from, all the possible tunnels <clears throat> he might be, you know, able to sneak through, uh, sneak through to your side of the map. And with the mobility of those gondor knights, you can actually try to do that. The spiderlings, they will be, by the way, able to take down this farm. Unfortunately for the man of the west player, the pikemen are not coming just yet. The builder has to be careful though. He's there. Uh, looking for more farms, we'll be finding that one potentially in the back. And that forced the man of the west player to go to go, you know, to come all the way back to defend against those spiderlings. That again is actually good for the goblin player. Because during this time he's pretty much untouched. Um the thing is when you are playing against goblins and dwarves, attacking them at their own side of the map is not always the best choice. Especially against dwarves, because they are barely expanding around their own fortress. They are using the map, the entire map to expand. But yeah, you will always be able to take down this one of these tunnels. He's gonna use the rallying call, and Imperial is just gonna demolish. If he can take down this one in the back and this one in the front, that could be actually massive. But he has a lot of spiderlings inside this tunnel that uh, might be a risky move. In the meantime, the work layer will be creeped by Fairy, the man of the West player. Warchan was used. Is he gonna still commit to that? And what happened here, actually? Oh, I don't know what's happening here. Like a gangbang situation, sorry, but a lot of spiderlings are here. He's losing a lot of those Gondor Knights, by the way. Will be able to save one battalion, but dealt also a lot of damage to the spiderlings. Oh, is he gonna be able to get away? Nope. He was not able to take down the tunnel, and he was not able to get away with one of those Gondor Knights. But he was able, luckily, to save one of them. Uh, only two units remaining, so he needs to make a well, definitely. Um, but since it was not a stable delete... He's gonna keep spamming those Gondor Knights all the time. He was also able to creep this works. Now scaring off those Spiderlings with those Pikemen. And him, you know, now you need to try to finish off this tunnel with your next attack. Uh, Fissure is coming up on the field for Imperialist. We have now almost two power points collected for the Goblin player. 450 command points available. 400 command points and almost three power points collected for the Man of the West player. So he has a bit more power points than his opponent does because also he was able to creep, remember. Okay, Spiderlings are chasing down those Gondor Knights. You need some reinforcements here as fast as possible. They are quite mobile and super hard to deal with. The well is coming up. And again, those units, they will be also now forced to recover. Um, you need to also now, I think in a situation like this, when you see that many Spiderlings on the field, uh, you need to just make more pikemen or potentially some archers. They are looking for a farm. They will be finding that one. But there are some pikemen around, ready to defend. Um, in the meantime, the goblin player is also creeping the works at the left side of the map. Doesn't go for the upgrade on the spider pitch just yet. He's gonna get some half troll swordsmen. They are also gonna be a great choice against the Gondor Knights. And there are some tunnels, as you can see, around this area. Uh, the builder from the Man of the West player will be able now to see them. But you gotta be careful. Because uh, Imperialist is paying attention. 
Rohan Spearmen are creep creeping this works in the middle of the map. This creep will be secured by the goblin player. The builder. Looks like you want to kill the builder. Yeah. Can he get away? Nope, he can't get away and the builder will be taken down, guys. Unfortunately. For the man of the West player. Now he has Iomi on the field, though. <clears throat> Iomi is gonna be the sport those Gondor Knights need to deal with the Spiderlings, to deal with the Goblins, to deal with the potential, after all, Swordsman coming out of the Fissure level 1. Um, luckily for the man of the West player, Imperialis is just expanding around this area. So that, you know, kind of gives you the chance to. Where, where to expect the attacks from, you know what I'm saying? So you can also expect them to come from this area. And um, maybe, you know, he needs to play also through this area. He needs to try to push this side a bit back while expanding at the bottom left side. He has a level 3 battalion of Rohan Spearman. I think he should be able to win that fight with the whole crown stand and Porcelain formation um, against the Goblin Warriors. But they are also dealing a lot of damage in return. That's actually crazy with the poison blades. Now he will be using Rallying Coal with Iomir leadership. They have double buff now. He's gonna try to take down those tunnels as fast as possible. He was already able to take down this one. He's also gonna be able to take down the second. Warchan was used. Uh, it's time to run, I think, in a situation like this. Iomir is leveling up, though. Don't lose your Gondor Knights in a situation where... You can't take anything from them, you just, you know, take down. He was able to take down the tunnel. He was able to bait his war chant and then just go back. Spiderlings are quite fast though, and he's gonna lose his Gondor Knights here, unfortunately. Yeah, that's gonna be the case. He can't get away. Yamir luckily was able to get some experience at least. He's only one level away from the Outlaw leadership. That again will give him so much money from killing those half troll swordsmen and those spiderlings all the time. This farm is gonna be taken down. And during all this time, you know, the goblin player is expanding quite nicely. So, you know, he's gonna lose another Gondor Knight here. Hmm, that's really bad. He lost like 3-4 battalions of Gondor Knights so far, and that's giving so much power points to his opponent. Um, yeah. Logan, thank you so much for the follow, man. Appreciate it. Okay, now we're gonna have some half troll swordsman. He has only pikemen to defend. Luckily, the cave pads are gone. So that means the debuff is gone. Look how strong the half troll swordmen are here, guys. Um, but he has two battalions now. They should be able to deal with them. Uh, they are using the charge attack for the buff. Spiderlings are focusing more on the map control. Taking down potentially another farm here from the Man of the West player. Um, if we take a look into the current power points and command points, we can see that the goblin player Imperialist has six power points collected after Warchan and Keefbats. And is sitting on 600 command points, guys. Nine power points collected, but only after rallying cold. So he didn't went for the second ability just yet, which could be revealed, which could be healed. And 550 command points available for the man of the West player. <clears throat> but it's gonna, you know, the, the the difference between the command points is gonna rise really fast as Imperialis is expanding so nicely around the bottom left side now. And the rubble is rebuilding up over time, as you know. Luckily, Iomi is now level 4, so he's gonna get some resources at least to, you know, to be able to get more units on the field. But the problem is, he needs to also make sure to have more command points to not run out of command points within the next 2 minutes. Uh, Tia4430, oh, thank you so much for the follow. Welcome to the stream, man. <clears throat> Welcome to the game number 6, guys, and the grand finals for Battle for Middle Earth 2, the rise of the Witch King. We had a good against evil tournaments going on. And today is the finals. In the best of seven, <clears throat> the score is 3-2. You can always see the scoreboard at the top side of your screen. Um, we have now Barry being the man of the West player. And Imperialist being the goblin player. On the map Sakura Forest 2. If Barry wins that one, the tiebreaker game, the deciding game, will be played on the map for of Eisen. I mean, he is kind of being able to defend himself, but I think Gary is being super scared against Imperialist. That's what I feel like. Because most of the time when I was watching Ferry, you know, when I was commentating his games in the round of 16, in the quarterfinals, but also in the, in the semifinals, he was playing a bit more aggressive, you know? And I feel like in this, in this finals, maybe it's the finals, maybe it's because he knows Imperialist is a 
experience and a great great player. I feel like he's playing really defensively. Regardless what he's playing. If he's playing man or goblins, he's playing super defensively. You know? Yeah, I mean, I also know the fact, and that's what people told me at the beginning of the series, that Talos told me that both matchups are favoring the Russian player Imperialist. You know, man against goblins. But also, you know, dwarves against goblins. I mean, we know that dwarves against goblins is really hard for the goblins. But, you know, in a situation like this, when you have multiple Gondor Knights, maybe we should be using them to try to take down some of those tunnels. Uh, instead of running with all of them. Oh, he's using War Chant. Those Spiderlings are quite fast, man. You can't outrun them. It looks like he's just gonna sacrifice one of those Gondor Knights, maybe. To get away with the other two. Is this gonna be necessary? Yes, it's gonna be the case. He's gonna lose his battalion for sure. But Pikeman are here. Oh, never mind. He will be able to save him. That's actually quite nice. Ooh. Oh, just in time. Oh my goodness. Okay, he's towering up again. Um, to protect these areas. That's a massive army now with half troll swordsmen and a lot of spiderlings, by the way. Um, when you think about it, you know, by, by building a tower here, just like he did, you can actually get a lot of vision done around this area and protect yourself quite nicely. Same here with this situation. And if you build a tower here as well, you can actually see everything and have some defensive tools. He's gonna go for the Lone Tower Special Summon, by the way, just right there. To block this pathway as well. He also managed to put some arches inside of it. Doesn't have the power points he needs for the rebuilds, though. He might lose this tower right now. Oh, the builder. What is the builder doing right there, guys? Oh, the builder was just running it down for no reason. Painted land will be used from the goblin player to commit to commit to the tower. Uh, we have <coughs> cave pads being used. Iomir and Gondor Knights are being in a rough situation. He might lose those Gondor Knights. They are level 2. Would be a shame. He's trying to block their movements, by the way, with the other battalion as he's trying to run away. But he didn't manage to do that. And he will be losing the level 2. Uh, the Lone Tower in the meantime has been taken down from those half troll Swordsmen. But I don't think that the uh, Goblin player will be able to deal much more damage now. With the archers in the back. Oh, never mind, he's gonna have now the Wildman of Dunland Special Summon. He wanna commit to that as much as possible. He wanna deal as much damage as possible here because he knows if he doesn't do that, the Man of the West player is just gonna build up more towers. It's gonna be even harder and harder to deal the damage you are looking for. Rebuild is ready. Don't use it on the farm, try to use it on the tower, and that's gonna be the plan. He has the tool now to save this tower here, against this battalion of those half-troll swordsmen. There are no arches inside whatsoever. Yomir is level 6, he might also be forced to use it on this level 2 farm. But I'm assuming he's gonna use it on the tower here first. Which he needs to do now, by the way. Oh, just in time. Just in time. And unbelievable how strong those half-troll swordsmen is, alright? Look at the damage output, and they are almost taking no damage from the tower. Uh, in the meantime, those Wildmen are taking down the Rangers. And even with the rebuilds, he might lose that to a single battalion of those half troll swordsmen. That's unbelievable. One battalion killed technically two towers here alone, by the way. That's crazy, guys. And he was baiting off the uh, rebuild as well. That's impressive how strong they are. One battalion, so I think uh, there is no need of complaining about, um, you know, complaining about towers because the tower costs a lot of money and time. And one battalion of half troll swordsmen, with the rebuilds being used, was still able to take down the tower. <laughs> Beautiful, and yeah, all of a sudden, even though he was towering up, he went for the lone tower special summon, but he's getting outnumbered, outspammed, out macroed in this game. From the Goblin player, we have 925 command points, chat. 925 command points. Here's the Spider Alive special summon ready. And he will be using that immediately. Almost full command points for the Goblin player Imperialist in the game number 6. Still decent amount of command points for Fairy. Because he has a level 2 farm here, level 3 farm here, level 3 farm here. So he's getting somewhat decent resources. But the problem is he can't deal with that anymore. He's getting some pikemen to deal with the spiders 
After all, swordmen are fighting those Gondonites, even with the leadership of the Eomir. They are dealing so much damage. Look at this damage. They are taking down everything at the same time. They need to retreat now, those Gondonites. They're gonna, he's gonna lose all of them, guys. The spiders are taking down those structures one by one. A level 2 farm has been taken down. They might potentially be able to take down this level 3 farm as well. I think that's what they are aiming for. Just gonna take down this farm first. <coughs> yeah. Azok is here as well. He's being surrounded pretty much on the map Sakura Forest. Yes, some farms around this area though. Which is not bad. But the problem is that he can't leave this side. He has even upgrades now on his units. We didn't have to check, check this side of the map now for a long time because there is nothing happening here. All the fights are happening around this area pretty much since the start of the game. So, normally I could just go AFK, leaving the cam like this and you could see everything that is going on on this map, you know? <laughs> Alright, Warchan was used on those half 12 swordsmen. They have the scavenge, no, they have the forge blades only, no armor. No armor needed. Goblins OP maybe. Rallying Call was used. Double buff for the Rangers. They are quite strong. Don't underestimate them. But the problem is he's gonna lose the barracks. He's gonna lose the level 3 farm. And all of a sudden he will be only at 635 command points. But don't count those two farms by the way. He's gonna tower up. But we have seen already what those half troll swordmen can do. Even without the forge plates. That means, that means with the upgrade they're gonna take down this tower in seconds. Luckily, Yomiya is giving you some money from killing those units. Every time you kill those half rolls swordsmen and goblins and whatsoever, you get money because of the outlaw leadership. So you can technically get some more units on the field. Lone Tower is gonna be ready soon as well. Um, but what you can't replace are those level 2, level 3 farms. You can't replace them. You can't uh, deny the resource income from the goblin player. He has lumber mills, full command points, upgrades, everything what he needs. Spider riders are coming coming now as well. Azok is on the field, almost level 4. And, you know, he can keep up the pressure all the time. Because even though if you are able to defend yourself, but then after the defense, you are not able to push back. Look at these tunnels right here, in front of the face of the Man of the West player. Uh, and for the next fight, he's gonna have the cave beds ready as well. Tainted land is gonna be ready, so that means the leadership is gonna be meaningless during this fight. It's gonna get nullified, as you know. Um, he has not as much ranges on the field as he would need. Lone Tower Special Summon is gonna put the ranges inside of it. Rebuild is gonna be ready in the worst case scenario. Tainted land is available, and cave beds are available, as you know. You can even go for the... He has a level 3 here. Yeah, that's what I wanted to see. He has a level 3. He can go for the mountain giants if he wants to. He can do whatever he wants to pretty much at this time. Okay. Thief pads will be used. Disengage here. You don't want to be in a melee fight against those half twelve swordsmen. And yeah, that's... That, look at this. Tainted land. There are ranges inside, by the way. But look at the damage output, guys. Without Azog. Azog is not even touching that. It's getting bursted down. Rebuild was used, but look. Oh, is Longshot incoming? Yes, Longshot is incoming, dealing no damage. They don't even have the scavenged armor, by the way. I mean, they have the leadership from the... Or the, the uh, buff from the Painted Lantern. Azok is level 4. Awakened Worm will be special summoned. Just why not? He's burning the rangers down. Yomir is one of the last units remaining. Yeah, that's true. That's true, guys. Yeah, I think that's gonna be the game. Or do you guys believe in a comeback from this situation? Barry does not give up, yeah. Fire Drakes. So little, but size doesn't matter everything. They're so strong. Burn was able to take down the archery range level 2. 
I mean, he's trying to tower up, but he could see so many times that the tower is not gonna matter that much, you know? I mean, they do some work. It's not like they are useless or something, but um, they don't have the impact you need. Not like they are really hard to take down. One half throw swordman is enough to take it down, you know? Um, he has almost 14, 15 power points, though. Maybe that's what he's saving for. Okay, Warchan was used. He gets a lot of power points, and Iomir, with Iomir, he's getting also a lot of money. Look, his money, guys, he has almost 3,000 resources collected. He can go for the, for the Gansaf if he wants to. For Aragorn. Fire Drakes are here. Look, the Fire Drakes now. Look, the Fire Drakes now, guys. And the Spiderlings on top of that. Power points are rising, though. A tunnel right in front. Why not? Multiple long shots incoming. Tough troll spot, man. I'm not even taking damage from that. <clears throat> but look the money from the man of the West player. He just bought something for 2,000 something money. I think he just bought two heroes or something. Rohirrim special summon. Gondor asks for help, and Rohan will answer. Death! Yes, <laughs> that was so epic, guys. Fourth year Luingas! A sword day, a red day, ere the sun rises. Look, this half troll swordman, they are so strong against Kev, that's unbelievable, you know? They're swordman, you know what I'm saying? They're really strong. Boromir is here, the captain. Is this the hope of man? Is this the last hope of man? Maybe. Maybe he is. Yomia is here, level 10, by the way. Yomia is level 10, boys. And we have Aragorn, guys. The true king of the man is joining to save Middle Earth. But unlike in, unlike in Minas Tirith, he doesn't have army of the dead with him for the sport. And yeah. I mean, he can do something once he's level highly leveled. We know Aragorn is like a one-man army. We know that, right? And he's always sitting hard. But look, the damage output against the half throw Swordman is almost zero. They are buffed with the charge attack and the scavenge armor. And they are so strong. Look at this, guys. He needs to hit the half throw Swordman like five times to kill one unit. Boromi is level 2, though. He has now Horn of Konzo. <clears throat> that can always work with the uh, Ranger's long shot. Aragorn. Look, they are stunned now. They can't move because of the Horn of Guns ability from Boromir. Side by side, Captain and the King, boys. Captain and the King. Can Aragorn... I mean, if there is a hero besides Gandalf himself that can help the Men of the West to come back to the scheme, it has to be Aragorn, the King of the Man, you know? Eomir level 10. He has a lot of heroes, so don't underestimate the hero power. Aragorn is almost level 2. That's gonna unlock his plates master. And Boromir is level 3 now, by the way. I mean, the thing is, Goblin player has so much money. He can go for Drogov. I think he's going for Drogov potentially. He has 20 power points collected. Um, 12 power points now for the Man of the West player. 720 command points still, though. It looks like his money is not that bad. He was expanding around this area quite nicely. As Rangers, a tower with the statue on the back. So... He has now Boromir with the with the Horn of Gonzo. He can get multiple ranges now from the Archer range level 2. Try to get them level 2. He's not giving up. He's fighting until the very end. He might even be potentially come back to the scheme. Everything is possible. But in order to come back to the scheme, and in order to in order to win this game, he needs to win multiple fights, multiple battles, you know. It's not gonna be possible to win one fight and snowball afterwards and end up winning the game. That's not gonna be possible. Unlike the Goblin player, I think Goblin player Imperialis is in a situation in which if he wins that one fight, he can literally go for the finish. And yeah, look, the tower is gone in a second. There is another tower here. Captains are coming. Is Horn of Gonda available? Not quite yet. Longshot incoming. Not too much damage dealt. This Ranger Battalion has to run away. There we go, Azok is here though. Azok is here, and Aragorn is only level 1. Great battle reach, he's on cooldown. Aragorn, 
kann. Oh, no. No, he used the heal, but it was lag. He lag. Oh, no. That's why you need to use heal before. You don't need to wait until the very last moment, you know? That's too risky in Battle for Middle Earth games, guys. And the king has been taken down, unfortunately. And look who is there. Look, a big boy is here, guys. We're gonna have Summoned Dragon. I'm summoning the Blue Eyes White Dragon. Who's hosting? Elro here is hosting. So it's neutral host, you know? No one has host advantage, guys. Okay, he's summoning now. Uh, Johnny Bunny. Thank you so much for the follow, man. Appreciate it. Welcome to the stream. Uncle Aragorn, come on. Crack that. 95, thank you so much for the follow as well. Appreciate it. I think we got like 100 new followers today, guys. Thank you so much for that. Everyone, welcome to the stream. Um, I think that might be the final push. Because he literally killed everything from the Man of the West player. Killed his archer range, that means no more rangers. Will kill his level 3 farm and his stable, that means no more Gondor Knights. There's only a level 1 barracks with literally zero health. Look at the health from the barracks, guys. Boromir is the dragon slayer, though. Oh, look, Boromir won against the dragon. Did you guys see that? 1v1. He is now level 5. The captain of Gondor, leadership unlocked. I mean, this is like... What was that? Did he just demolish the tunnel? Um, yeah, I mean, at this point, the goblin player has all the upgrades he needs. All the units he needs. It was kind of unfortunate that he lost Aragon there because of the heal lag. It would be a, maybe a different story if Aragon would get like a couple, couple of levels. He's gonna be really strong. With the Blade Master, he can do some work. Plus 18 from Yumiya Spear, level 10, quite strong. I mean, Fairy is fighting until the very end. So it might be possible that Imperialist is like, okay, I'm losing my temper, I'm just gonna quit. It might be possible. But look who's back, guys. Look who's back, guys. Aragorn is back. The return of the king. That's what they mean, by the way. The return of the king. This is exactly what is happening right now. Okay. But Boromir, the captain. Aragorn was again late on that. And Perry is calling it GG now this time. That might be it. He has not the power points he needs. He is still five power points behind. Aragorn is the last man remaining. But it's just too much for him to handle. Plus 210 in the bank from killing Aragorn. And the game will be over. With that also the finals. As Imperialist will be winning that tournament good against evil by defeating Fairy for two.